President Obama returns to the Gulf, why this trip is unlike any of his earlier visits. Before his departure, the president said email to some of his supporters what he is telling them about the future of energy and climate legislation, and why the wind industry is now celebrating what it sees as a new trend in Europe. From the Energy News Center in Washington, D.C., this is the Energy Report with Susan McGinnis. Good afternoon, I'm Tyler Suters, and for Susan McGinnis, thanks for joining us for this Monday edition of the Energy Report. Right now, President Obama is back on the Gulf Coast yet again, and this most recent visit of his includes his first stops in Alabama, Florida, and Mississippi since that spill happened. He'll also make his first visit to barrier islands that are seeing oil wash ashore right now. Once he returns to Washington, the president will discuss the spill tomorrow night in his first Oval Office address. The White House says BP has agreed to the president's demand for a multi-billion dollar escrow fund for compensation. Administration officials and BP are now negotiating the size of that fund and exactly how it will be administered. And the fund will no doubt be on the agenda for the president Wednesday. As everybody is aware, I'm going to be meeting with the chairman uh, and other officials from BP on Wednesday. And so we're gathering up facts, stories right now, uh, so that we have an absolutely clear understanding about how we can best present to BP uh, the need to make sure that individuals and businesses uh, are dealt with in a fair manner and uh, in a prompt manner. That will be the very first face-to-face -face meeting between the president and top-level BP officials since the accident first happened back in April. BP is saying it expects to contain more than 2 million gallons of oil per day by the end of this month. That is more than triple the amount that the company is capturing right now. And that announcement comes after a letter from the Coast Guard telling BP to speed up the containment process. Tomorrow, BP expects to begin siphoning an additional 400,000 gallons each day by burning it using a specialized boom being installed on a rig right now. The company is also deploying undersea sensors into the ruptured well to better track the amount of oil gushing into the Gulf. The company says it has spent $1.6 billion so far in response efforts to the spill. That total includes new $25 million grants to Florida, Alabama and Mississippi, and also the very first $60 million for a project to build barrier islands off the Louisiana coast. And today, President Obama is using the Gulf disaster as part of an online push for energy reform legislation. His Organizing for America website is now sending out emails citing the oil spill and in turn seeking support for clean energy legislation. Here's a look at the online petition the president is asking his political supporters to join. It calls for, quote, comprehensive energy and climate reform, reform that creates green jobs and ends U.S. dependence on foreign oil. In the emails, the president is pushing policies like rolling back tax breaks for oil companies and prioritizing investment in clean energy R&D. These emails also make mention of the pending Kerry Lieberman Senate climate bill, saying that it has ideas from both Democrats and Republicans and deserves support. The Gulf oil spill will also be the hot topic here on Capitol Hill this week. Execs from the five major oil companies are scheduled to testify before a House Energy and Commerce subcommittee tomorrow. And BP President Tony Haywood himself has been called in for a Thursday hearing. Because of that upcoming schedule, ENC Chairman Henry Waxman and also the subcommittee chairman of investigations Bart Stupak wrote to Hayward himself detailing what the committee wants to know. That 14-page letter from the lawmakers calls for Hayward to discuss five key decisions that BP made from the design of the well to the drilling technology. That letter alleges that the company made those moves to save time and save money at the expense of safety. Today, another major oil company is now reporting a leak of its own, albeit a drastically smaller one here in the U.S. Chevron says a pipeline near Salt Lake City, Utah, leaked about 33,000 gallons of crude into a nearby creek this weekend. The manager of Chevron's refinery there says an electrical arc traveled through a metal fence post and apparently ruptured the 10-inch pipeline, leaving about a quarter-sized hole in it. The spill has coated about 300 birds in the area, and it also may be threatening an endangered species of fish near Salt Lake City. The amount of power generated by new wind turbines in the European Union this year will be about the same as the amount from new gas plants. The European Wind Energy Association says, while it's still too soon to say whether there will be more wind energy capacity installed, wind energy will be competing for the top spot with new gas power plants. According to EWIA, as it's known, gas installations nearly doubled that of wind installations in Europe back in 2006. 
But by 2008, wind had overtaken gas for the first time. And then last year, wind gained 10 gigawatts of new capacity. That's compared with seven new gigs for gas. EWEA expects an additional 10 gigawatts of new wind power capacity this year alone, bringing total wind capacity in the EU to 85 gigawatts, up from 75 last year. However, gas is still in the lead in the EU in terms of overall generating capacity. Hopes for cleaner burning coal worldwide rest on developing technology for carbon capture and sequestration. And one big issue here has been how do you make sure that the carbon dioxide you capture and inject underground does in fact stay there? Well, scientists now at DOE's National Energy Technology Lab think they may have a way to find out. You see, they're injecting a non-toxic liquid called a perfluorocarbon into CO2 as the CO2 is pumped underground. The chemical in turn acts like a tracer and allows the scientists to track the carbon if it moves outside the formation where it's injected. This technique may eventually help answer questions about whether the sequestration process really does work. Elsewhere, Dominion Resources says it now has a deal to move and store natural gas from a portion of this major gas play, the Marcellus Shale. According to Dominion, the 15-year agreement calls for it to move gas from console energy wells in both central and southwestern Pennsylvania to pipelines traveling to consumers and to storage facilities in Clinton County. That's in the north central part of the state. If the companies receive regulatory approval, construction should start in March of 2012, and the project could be running by that November. Well, as we said, a busy day tomorrow here in Washington for Big Oil. A major hearing on tap tomorrow, 9.30 a.m. Eastern. Leaders from the Big Five oil companies will testify before the House Energy and Commerce Subcommittee on Energy and Environment. That hearing will be in the Rayburn House Office Building. Clean Skies News will be there for what promises to be an intense hearing. And then at 10 a.m. Eastern, another discussion involving the Gulf disaster. The Platts Energy Podium is hosting a pair of oil and gas experts to discuss the engineering issues involved in the spill and the technology involved with deep water drilling to begin with. Clean Skies News will be in attendance for that discussion tomorrow also. And that is this Monday edition of the Energy Report. Thanks for joining us here in the Energy News Center. You can follow us throughout your day on Twitter and Facebook and also reach us here anytime in Washington at this address. It's contact at cleanskies.com. I'm Tyler Suters. We're glad you're with us. You're watching Clean Skies News.